Let's go. The greatest undervalued play on artificial intelligence is Tesla. Shout outs to solving the money problem. Also like, share, subscribe, support that guy's channel. And here we go. We're going to jump in and shout outs to Dan Eyes. He's going to have this conversation that needs to be had. Take it away, my brother. Director of Equity Research at Wedbush Securities. Good to see you, Dan Ives. Some of your thoughts on the stock moves, which have been monstrous this week, um, you know, can it continue to move higher? It's just starting because what I view is they needed to ultimately show that margin story that it was going to rebound. And we saw just massive margin rebound in terms of for Tesla. And it's all about deliveries into next year. 20 to 30% growth, much higher than anyone expected, even the bulls like us. I think it's get the popcorn out. This is just the stage to this company being over a trillion dollar mark cap. I mean, you know, someone when I was asking about the competitive landscape said there is a monstrous difference between Tesla and Lucid and Rivian. Would you say that's right? I mean, not come on, guys. This is elementary stuff. But these are the people that you assume are like experts and wizards in the market. Now, of course, he's just a reporter, so we're not holding it against the reporters. But net net, they say things and you're like, wow, they know what they're talking about. They talk about this all day. It's like, yeah, they know what they're talking about in general, about general stuff. They don't know what they're talking about when it comes down to the specifics of particular companies. And that's why they have people like Dan Ives and et cetera to commentate on it. Not even the same sentence? It, I mean, we're talking Mahomes compared to other quarterbacks, right? I mean, th this is just a separation from a scale and scope. They're going to have 2 million deliveries next year. I mean, a lot of these other, you're talking about 100, 200 K. What Tesla's able to do right now, now it's. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Like they got millions upon millions of deliveries and they're like, they're not the same as Rivian. They're not the same as Lucid. Like, no, bro. It's expanding that product line. You'll see Semi, you'll see Roadster, of course, Cybertruck's out there. Sub $30,000 vehicle, we think going into next year. That's ultimately going to be the key as this all ultimately plays out. And look, you go into this, me and you have talked about this the last few weeks. New York City cab driver was bearish in Tesla into this quarter. They showed the margins, they showed the delivery, and I do believe the robo-taxi takeaways was the wrong one that the bears came away with. This will be an autonomous and AI story over the coming years. You know, a Kathy Wood over at ARK Invest uh, sold 77,000 shares. Um, the closing price was 260.48, valued at over $20 million. Mistake taking some profits now? I mean, how quickly does this stock grow? Um, was that not a good move on her part? Look, Kathy and ARK, I mean, one of the biggest supporters of Tesla, right? So, I mean, they'll, for, for the long term, I mean, if you look at their model on robo-taxis and where this is all heading, it just speaks to our broader point. This is the most undervalued AI play in the market. On that point, I agree. The most undervalued AI play on the market. And shout out to solving the money problem. He's going to say what he's got to say, but I definitely wanted to say. That's facts. That's, that's the cream of the crop of what I was telling you about. It's the largest AI undervalued play. Let's get it. And regarding Dan's comments on... Arc's valuation for Tesla. They do have a five-year fair valuation for Tesla at $2,600 per share, roughly 10 times its current value. Now, they could be wrong, but what if they're not? And as for the selling, Arc Invest may correctly believe that their brains are big enough to tie in the market, sell out of this, look into profit, buy that. My brain certainly isn't, so I don't even try. But it's interesting that people always seem to read into the tea leaves when Arc's buying. Well, actually, they never care when they're buying. They do care when they're selling. But Arc has an active trading strategy, extremely high risk, by the way. But just because and then also too yeah it's pretty high risk but i think they're going to do that and it makes sense and maybe they have to allocate more funds depending on how much of a particular stock they hold because they did purchase when it was low so again they made that purchase so people kind of insinuate that to kind of be like look they sold is this just a kind of a short-term thing and it's not really it's a long-term thing because arc has sold a small slice of a position of tesla doesn't mean they're negative on the company it just means well the stock's ripped 20 plus percent 26% since earnings in a couple of days. Looking to profit, redeploy that capital elsewhere. Again, my brain's nowhere near big enough to be trying that. But just because ARK's selling or buying doesn't mean they've become more or less bullish on a company. Instead, they're looking at arbitrage and honestly probably asking for trouble. And I think what we saw with this quarter was a huge step in the right direction because of margins. Because we can talk about AI autonomous all day long. It comes down to margins. You couldn't see their team margins. So the 200 BIP improvement now going to 20% next year. But look, 20 or 30% delivery growth. If they even hit the bottom end of that range, then th this is a stock with a three in front of it. 
Now, I do want to emphasize, it seems pretty clear, and I don't know for sure, but it seems like the recent surge in Tesla stock is the result of a lot of big money institutions, algorithms, piling into the stock, not at all to do with autonomy. After all, we saw the reaction to the Wii Robot event. Stock collapsed, actually. Instead... Yeah, but they're investing because they actually possibly believe it a little bit more, especially energy, just because it has performance that's on a sheet that they can verify. So now you want to put institutional oh, money just a few into years it right uh, versus before when it was speculation, right? And especially there's a consecutive quarter of growth. So that also helps too. But prior to that, no, they're not going to put people's pension into it just off of a, you know, a prayer and a dream. Now, that entire business is going to look like a rounding error relative to what their autonomous business is doing in terms of revenue and importantly profits. In other words, as I record this in late October 2024, it seems as though the vast majority of money in Tesla at this point in time thinks they are just a car company that what's happening with their, quote, car business is all that matters and continue to completely ignore autonomy. Wow. Yeah, you know, um, I started to hear some good things about the batteries, growth, the Cybertruck margins. Um, those seem to be good news. There was some impatience pertaining to full self-driving at the end of 2026 because is that hogwash? Is that get pushed back to 2027? Is that okay for you? It, to me, trying to look at six months, if, it, if it's first half 26, second half 26, I think it's split in hairs in terms of where this is all going. Because the autonomous and AI story, I believe the AI story is worth a trillion dollars alone to, to Tesla. So if it moves out six months, it doesn't necessarily move the needle for us. It, it I completely agree with this point from Dan. I don't really care about the specific timing. What I care about... Yeah, people go back and forth about the time and it's like, bro, it don't matter. Are they going to deliver? Is the overall picture. If you imagine an exponential curve, what I really care about is where does that curve get to? Where does it reach? What's the end destination in terms of revenue and profitability? I don't care. Because again, I, I modeled Tesla out over more than a decade. This is why my valuation model, which you guys can check out on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment at the investor level and above. From day one, when I first published it back in 2021, always spanned a 10-year time horizon. I'm not looking into next quarter, next week, next year, and thinking, oh, that's all I care about. Because to do that would be to miss an enormous, enormous increase in Tesla's revenue and profitability, predominantly on the back of autonomy. A short-term focus blinds you to the long-term potential. So if I'm looking out sure. a decade plus into the future, and the reason, by the way, I don't share more than 10 years into the future is the level of uncertainty is just too great. I still model out beyond then, but I don't want to share that stuff because the level of uncertainty there, the rate of error is just too much. But I still think it's worth the exercise of actually modeling multiple decades into the future. So I couldn't give a flying fuck if autonomy happens three months later, three years later. What I care about is 10 years from now, 15 years from now, what does it look like? What's Tesla's slice of that? Did they have an unassailable data lead? Did they have the safest, most capable software? Did they have a strategy for massively deploying this, scaling almost instantly? Is it theoretically possible for anyone to catch them? Spoiler alert, no. This, again, explains why I'm still buying Tesla stock with every spare cent. I'd rather be doing that before they've unlocked a 10 plus trillion dollar opportunity than I Facts. Then they'll be doing it afterwards, right? And then the corporations are going to figure that out a little bit later than us. And that's where it gives us the actual advantage as retail buyers. But you got to look long term. You guys want short term gains and you want to make money in the next 20 days? Then go figure out something else. Go to the casino. But outside of that, that's not what we're doing over here. I don't know nothing about that. Find somebody else on the internet claiming that they can read candlesticks and make it happen. They can make you $1 trillion just by reading candlesticks. After. In the near term, it's really about coming out with a sub 30K vehicle. I think that's first half of next year. Margins rebounding, delivery growth rebound, especially in China. And then you start to look at all the growth levers that could happen here. That's why, the you know, you look at the last 24 hours, the bears, they're going back into those hibernation moves. Did someone say Tesla bears? What's this? Who did this? And there's a picture on screen now. Tesla Q. Hmm. I definitely don't understand the meaning of this meme. Could somebody please explain in the comments what this means? Obviously, Tesla Q would be Tesla short sellers. I, I don't quite understand. Uh, you know, Elon Musk has shown his political cards. And what do you tell the Democrats? Should they sort of put their political views aside and still believe in Tesla? Look, it's a tightrope. I mean, clearly, you know, it's been a controversial issue. But I think in terms of U.S., despite all the noise, it's been limited from a demand perspective in terms of the impact. Now, I'm not saying going forward th there can be some, you know, a little nervousness on that. But the reality is if you produce the best vehicle in the world for EVs, consumers yeah. will buy them. What an incredibly uncontroversial thing to say. You make an incredible product, the best product in the marketplace, people will buy it. What was the world's best-selling vehicle last year? That's right, Tesla. Tesla, where people say it's not. So, again, once you produce the car, produce the goods, people will come. But people are going to lie and say that it's not. And people are going to be not purchasing the car because they don't agree with you politically. People don't agree with a lot of things like child labor and et cetera. But they might still actually buy products from companies that possibly can correlate with some type of child labor inside their supply chain. But net-net, people are just going to buy the products. Now, I'm not saying that 
Tesla or anybody else is doing that. But what I am saying is people care about the product way more than anything. I don't know how many times people have been screaming out about, oh man, the labor at Amazon is bad or Walmart, the pay is bad. People still go there. People don't boycott it because the prices are right, right? And the quality versus the product. And they're just like, okay, I'm going to go there and still purchase. So again, the same is true with Tesla, but we make some of the best products globally. So again, we're killing it, crushing it. Anybody else saying that politics are going to destroy that? I mean, we'll see. To be continued. I'll see you guys in the next one. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And thanks to solving the money problem. Let's get it. The future, it's electric.